brothers and sisters, we will now have the awards presentation in honor of the awardees from the Board of Education of People of African Ancestry. The first recognition is given to a person who is not here with us today, and that's Mr. Mike Tyson. Mr. Tyson is receiving this recognition because while he was in prison, Dr. Clark wrote to him, communicated with him regularly. And as I visit the prisons across this country, then New York State, most of them come from downstate and they go upstate to the prisons that supplies the economy of upstate New York. Many of them have no visitors and they certainly don't have anyone to write to them. Dr. Clark's writing to Mike Tyson symbolized the fact that he believed in our people. He didn't pass judgment on them. He recognized them for the totality of who they were. He knew that Mike Tyson had been raised to be a fighter. He had been raised not to use his temper, but to lose his temper. That was the way he was bred for what he became. And he was open to the vulnerability of who he was. And there were efforts made to keep him vulnerable. And Dr. Clark saw that and wrote to him. And when Mike Tyson was released, he gave Dr. Clark $10,000. And Dr. Clark was the first chair of the Board for the Education of People of African Ancestry. And he asked me to go and receive this check, accept this check from Mike Tyson, because he was going to give it to the John Henry Clark House, because he wanted that building, that institution, with his name, to have that kind of compassion for our people in whatever condition we find them. And we tried to communicate with Mr. Tyson to let him know that we were going to do this. We were not successful, but we wanted to make this presentation because Dr. Clark believed in not what Mike Tyson was doing at the time that he got into difficulty, but the righteousness and dignity and human worth that he had in whatever his condition was. So this first recognition goes to Mr. Mike Tyson. Members of the Board of BAPA, please come to the front area in front of the stage. All board members, please uh, step up so that you can be acknowledged as well. Right I'm to the front of the stage. Turner. Dr. Turner's back there. Dr. Turner, would you please come up? At the present time, Wimberly Edwards, who's in the back, Cassandra Grant, who is also in the back. Dr. Sheila evans Trainum, a member of the board. Dr. James Turner, a member of the board. Jean Peters, member of the board. Betty Dobson, member of the board. These are the people who keep the programs going at Clark House. You are the people who keep the lights on and keep the insurance bills paid and keep the building looking the way you want it to look when you come in. But these are the people, through their volunteer, we have no paid staff at Clark House, none whatsoever. All of the work that we do is done by volunteers or grants that we're able to receive. It's my pleasure to accept this award on behalf of brother champion Mike Tyson. It's a certificate of appreciation for his generosity and for his support. Now, you can see that I am not Mike Tyson. However, I feel like him because I'm so proud to accept this award from the Board for the Education of People of African Ancestry. And I'd like to thank each and every member and especially Dr. Adelaide Sanford. Oh. Mr. Michael Hooper, a member of the board. Hooper Moore. Okay. 
More than 20 years has been taking children in routes revisited all over the Caribbean and Africa and has built schools and institutions with these children in the continent. I'm glad he's here with us. I'd like to recognize Madeline Moore Burrell. When Clark House came into existence, we had a board, but we had no history of fundraising. We had no history of having money. And so it was difficult to get a mortgage in order to buy the building. And so there were a group of sisters who came together and said, we don't want you to worry about paying that mortgage. And between August and October, they raised $20,000, $200,000, to pay off the mortgage. Now, <laughs> Madeline was a part of the group that was involved in discussing how to raise these funds. And she initiated the idea of a quilt. And if you visited Clark House, you may have seen that quilt. The interesting thing about the quilt is that many of the people who bought patches on this quilt did not know Clark House. The significance is that if you look at it, you will find the names of people like Whoopi Goldberg. You will find the names of major corporations like Verizon. They did not know Clark House, but they trusted the people. Whenever you're told that we don't trust each other, we trust each other. Madeline's idea was to have people, individuals, or corporate people buy a patch on this quilt. And then she found a wonderful, gifted person who took these patches and put them together the pieces that go together to make up this quilt. So it was not only the generosity of the people, but it was Madeline's idea that a single patch is one thing, but what happens when you put these patches together? You have a quilt and it hangs there for eternity. And we thank Madeline for the idea and for the implementation of that idea, which helped us to be able to burn the mortgage on the John Henry Clark. All that I could possibly say has been said, and I echo uh, the sentiments about Dr. Clark and Clark House. Um, but you should know that, like the, today's theme, when asked by Dr. Uh, Adelaide Sanford and my friend Susan Taylor to help burn the mortgage, that was a, also a situation where success was not assured, mm -hmm. but failure was not an option. Thank you. <laughs> Like the quilt, the struggle is not over. It's not finished. So my wish is that we take up this struggle, this commitment to collaborate together. And there are a lot of wonderful suggestions have been given today on how we could collaborate. But to use that as a way of reaffirming that the common thread that runs through all of our lives is something that was inspired by Dr. Clark, Clark House, Sister Adelaide, Susan, Betty, a host of people for whom the struggle is not over and success is not assured, but still failure is not an option. The 
Board for the Education of People of African Ancestry would like to recognize Mr. L. Londell McMillan. Yes, indeed. You may have heard of L. Lundell Macmillan. He is lawyer to the stars. And when the tribute came about several years ago, money for which was going to Clark House, L. Lundell Macmillan spontaneously said, I will give $10,000 toward the John Henry Clark House. And he did. And he want to I want to recognize L. Lundell because of his singularity as a very prominent and successful young man who works with entertainers when the entertainers and the athletes have not always recognized Dr. Clark's value and what he has meant to our people. L. Lundell Macmillan did. And his interest in the Clark House, he's a member of the board, and regardless to his work and his travels, and all of the other responsibilities that he has, still calls his Aunt Adelaide to find out what's happening at the John Henry Clark House. And if you will notice, we are not giving trophies brought at Trophy World. We are not feeding someone else's economy. These recognitions characterize the John Henry Clark House. They are pictures of people of African ancestry who have carried the torch so brilliantly for our people. And they were prepared by a member of the board. Good afternoon. I'm Otak. <laughs> Greetings. I'd like to thank the board for the education of people of African ancestry. I'd like to thank uh, all of the board members. I'd like to thank my Aunt Adelaide and her family. I'd like to thank everyone here for your constant giving and fighting for our people, um, prayers for our people. There's so many in this room that I'm thankful for my own personal deliverance from the struggles. There are people here on a personal level, like my aunt, Uncle Leon over here on the right, who, but for him, getting me out of a lot of struggles in the projects where I grew up here in this Bedford-Stuyvesant community, I'd be in trouble. To Aunt L.A. planting seeds of the beloved stature in my DNA. To Professor Brother James Turner, who at Cornell University gathered all of us of like minds so that we understood the principles of Ujamaa and many other collective principles in the liberation struggle. Two wonderful friends from the past to the present, like Dr. Anthony Brown, who we both grew up together in the hood here, who's now the director and professor at Hunter College in African American Studies Department. Give that brother a hand. We all, we all come from humble beginnings, but from an amazing journey and amazing people. To my sister, Rihanna Bay over here, who's amazing marketing expert with Spike Lee's company. To all of you all here who've inspired me, I'm Susan Taylor, who I used to read your column in the spirit of my mother's beauty parlor on Ralph Avenue and then on Reed Avenue before Malcolm X Boulevard. I had to clean up the tables and stack up the essences and the ebonies. And then getting to know her boss at the time, Ed Lewis, who she told me to go make a deal with Brother Ed Lewis so that I could get Prince and Stevie Wonder to come to the Essence Festivals. And I had to negotiate with Brother Ed Lewis, who was a giant. And I didn't know, I was a young lawyer just negotiating, ignoring calls. Sister, Sister Taylor tapped me on my coat and said, Brother Lundell, I want you to call him back. Pay your respects to Brother Ed. 
and I did. All this to say is a journey, it's a family. I'm not where I am because of any brilliance, excellence, and certainly not luck. But I'm here because of the fabric. Failure is not an option. Failure of what? In order to be able to make failure not an option, we have to know knowledge is power. Failure is not an option. My goal is to make more options so we don't have failure. So we have success, so we have excellence. Thank you so much.